Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home, where today we're going to a moon of gateway called Proxim. As no surprise, uh, it probably stands for uh, proximity because it, it's pretty damn close to the gas giant. I have some contracts with me here. I have to plant a flag, I have to transmit or recover scientific data from the surface, and I need to do these other things as well. I've recovered some of the crew from my previous missions in the spare time. That's why I've got Jeb and Bob with me today. Both five-star majestic Kerbals. <laughs> and we're coming up on stage separation here. This is one of the largest rockets I've actually built yet, um, even though it's... It didn't knock out the wings! <laughs> and I think it's time Time we reveal the payload. But <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> Why has it got three pieces? Here's the uh, here's the lander. It's got two nuclear engines there. It looks kind of alien if you look at it. But uh, yeah, the science is in here. It's got some parachutes. I hope <laughs> it's got some electric charge. Oh, everything it needs for a lander. And that is the piece that is going to Proxim. Now, hopefully, I can get there without actually having to use it because the Delta V map, the data is finally there. And I'll leave a link to that in the description for those of you who do play the mod for you to be able to actually <laughs> determine how much fuel you need to get to uh, each planet and each moon. Oh boy, time warp time. <laughs> now I've been fairly lucky this episode so far. The transfer window to Gateway only took 23 days. So uh, didn't have far to warp this time. Usually you usually have to warp like three years. And I know most of you will probably be cringing because I'm not using like multiple missions at the same time. But you know, this is just, it's just how I do things. I mean, we're on year like 19. Now, we've gone this far, we might as well go further. Now, I'm going to be using a gravity assist with comb here to get into the desired inclination around Proxim, assuming, yes, we're going to come around like that, that is perfect. <laughs> and the periapsis is perfect as well. This is a very lucky mission so far, and I'm just hoping <laughs> the luck carries on. For some reason, the sun flares aren't working currently. I'll, I'll, I'll get that fixed in a minute. But anyway, uh, so whilst I'm warping to Gateway, I want to talk a little bit about a new game that I want to play on the channel, Doom Eternal, as most of you, or some of you may know. Uh, it's a game that's coming out on Friday. I've played Doom 2016 in the past, and if you want to check that out, top right of your screen right now. Oh, that is beautiful. But Doom Eternal is coming out on Friday, and although it's not, it's it's nothing at all like Kerbal Space Program, but uh, if you guys do want to see that, please hit that subscribe button, and uh, I I guarantee I will be uploading some Doom Eternal because I am so excited for it. It's one of the it's one of the only games I've actually been hyped for for a really long time, uh, as well as Kerbal Space Program 2, obviously. So um, yeah, if you want to see that subscribe button, but that is gorgeous. That <laughs> what what a scene, you know. If I was still uploading in 4K, which I wish I could, but unfortunately, like my internet is dying right now. <laughs> it's really it's not good, <laughs> so I, I kind of can't. I have to upload in 1440p. But if that was 4K, some good wallpapers there. And now we're coming round to do the next maneuver, which will take us on a an encounter with Proxim. And the burn has begun, and man, this is gonna be a difficult one. Uh, but unfortunately, I've really messed my inclination up. <laughs> I didn't do the maneuver quite right around Comb, and I think it's just, it's flung me into a little bit of a bad maneuver, but Comb is extremely useful for any of you playing. Um, it, it's very good, it's, it's very heavy, it's very close to Gateway, which means for gravity assists around Gateway, it is one of the best moons to use. Oh, there it is, there it is. And doing a couple of passes of Gateway just so that I can get to my maneuver so that my ascending node will meet with Proxim, and then I don't have to worry about inclination at all. And there we go, an encounter with Proxim. Incredibly difficult to get, and I think my relative velocity with it is gonna be insane. <laughs> Look at that, we are barely in its sphere of influence before we've left. It's got such a small gravity, 0.1g on its surface. It's such a small gravity. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'll be travelling so fast that my next manoeuvre is outside of Proxim's sphere of influence. If I'm biome hopping, I better be damn sure that I know where I'm landing, because this is not a planet you want to mess up on. <laughs> this is one of the worst ones you could possibly make a mistake on. It's got the, the most difference in uh, terrain, I believe. So uh, if you don't mind me saying, this one's going to be a bit bloody difficult to do. But I might as well do some science or some here. <laughs> I've never done science around Proxim before, so here we go. Wait, have I? It looks like I have, but I don't think I've been in space near Proxim. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I can utilise the full extent of the material materials bay, which I sure as hell I'm gonna do, and look at Gateway! Oh, one of the best locations in uh, in the Tempest system. I could just do a dead burn here and just completely kill my velocity, but I think I'm gonna pick a proper landing site before I do that. And... Please stage. Oof, that was an explosion. <laughs> Not sure what exploded, probably the decoupler, but um, that, that was a bit... Oof. And here we go. 
Starting our burn down to the surface. It's looking all right so far. I've got a reaction wheel in there, clipped into this bit, but I mean, come on, it, it's a scriptural part. And here we go, about to make the first landing on the innermost moon. What's the gradient like? Oh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I'm gonna have to make this one very careful. I might have to set off again. 0.3 meters per second going down. I'm gonna speed that up a little bit, but uh, I need to make sure I stay pointing radial out no matter what. 0.4, 0.3. 0.2. Okay, let's see where we go with this one then. And we've landed. I finally made a lander that doesn't tip over immediately. <laughs> right, it's time to do some science experiments. I'll be honest, that's a pretty good angle for the lander to still be staying up. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> now, my most recent subscriber was this guy called Algerian General. We're just gonna do the. We're gonna do what I did earlier. And we'll, we'll just do this, you know, a bit of credit. If you want your name on a flag, subscribe at the right time. <laughs> right, anyway, <laughs> let's do an EVA report just above the surface. Do all that, do an EVA report on the surface, and get a surface sample at the same time. Surface sample, 67.5. 18. <laughs> 18, just, just, just the EVA report, just 18. Right, the next stop is the lowlands and we're making our way just just down just next to the steep slopes probably not the wisest of moves pretty good for rovers to be honest but i'm not sending a rover all the way out here this early in the career mode anyway a nice surface speed of five meters per second i'll slow this all the way back down we'll land on about the one and there we are Perfect, that was a really nice landing, you know. 12 experiments so far and a lot more to go. It's time for the good old surface sample and the EVA report. We are gonna exhaust Proxim's biomes because I need as much science as possible because I want that rapier engine. I really do. <laughs> 20 experiments and more to come. It's time to set off once again, and this time I'm heading for the Highlands. This one's going to be quite difficult to do, because I don't know how to gauge my velocity very well. So hopefully we can make it to the Highlands without using too much fuel. I need approximately uh, 2,000 to get back, I believe. Now obviously I'm not going to use another 2,700 on Proxim, but I need 2,000 from Proxim Orbit or Gateway or something along the lines of that. Now then, a flat area to land on around here is going to be pretty difficult to find. Now I am well aware that this is going to be extremely hard to land on. I'm not looking forward to doing it, I'll be honest. I messed that up completely. And coming in for the final landing. Oh, I made that a little bit, <laughs> a bit late there. <laughs> I had to go full throttle. And 28 experiments. It's time to set our course for road. All right, so we landed pretty much on the equator of Proxim, so inclination shouldn't be too much of an issue. It might be, but we can always fix that as we come out of Gateway. That's absolutely fine. I just need to warp so that I can just blast off from Proxim and get back to road immediately. It's time warp time again. <laughs> and we've set off. It's time to get back to road. Pretty good looking craft, you know. I'm really happy with this. It, <laughs> it's grown on me, I'll be honest. I didn't think it looked very good at, to begin with, but this is, it's been good, you know. 4,400 meters per second it's a bit good it's a 4 420 burn time though oh there we go just narrowly missing the mountains there Ooh. oh that's gonna be close am i gonna hit that i think i'm gonna hit, i'm gonna hit that you know aren't i i'm gonna i'm gonna freaking hit that oh that's not so good i think i'm good now Ooh -hoo -hoo. oh those are some chasms though proxims <laughs> proxim be thick That'd be amazing to drive a rover down there though. Look at that, you've got like this little path that you can take. That's so cool. I need to do that at some point. I'm moving on to better things, to take my science home and upgrade my things. Oh my God, that was, <laughs> that was awful. And here we are back at road at somewhere. I don't, don't know, quite know where. There it is. <laughs> I might as well just exhaust the rest of my fuel and you know I might try and land on this stage if possible um, because I can set these parachutes to deploy slightly sooner and here we go re-entry has started still going on time warp because nothing's heating up just yet thankfully I managed to burn the rest of my fuel just doing this and <laughs> the end of this mission was extremely inefficient but I'm just just trying to shed weight now because this stage fully fueled is 25 tons and it, it must weigh barely anything now that it's uh, lost all its fuel tell you what though I don't want to land in that water at all oh well it looks like we've survived the heating parachutes will you work right I'll deploy the gear. That looks like safe landing speeds, you know. Might might lose something, maybe the engines, but that's not going to destroy everything. Right, moment of truth. Let's see if we can actually land this stage. It's going to be quite a hard landing. Oof. 
Don't tip, don't tip, don't tip. <gasps> yes! <laughs> we managed to get the entire lander. That is so cool. Let's see how much science and funds we get. So we have 1.6 million funds. Add 817 science. Wow. <laughs> I wonder how much we got. So that's what we got from the contracts as well. That is incredible. And we've transmitted or recovered scientific data from the surface of Proxim. That's done as well. That is fantastic. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you enjoyed that, please do leave a like and subscribe because these episodes take a lot of effort to make. I'll see you all in the next episode.